Hello, my name is Kate Egan and I am your instructor for pharmacology this semester. This is Biology 200. And um, I wanted to give you an orientation to the course and just a little bit of background information. So um, this class this semester for the first time ever is offered solely as an online class. I um, was attempting to take a sabbatical leave of absence this semester, which um, didn't work out all that well because nobody else was all that interested in teaching pharmacology. So the way we got around that is the administration suggested that I offer this class as, an, as a solely online class. So that's what I'm doing. So I have mixed feelings about this. I um, really, really love teaching pharmacology and have been doing so for um, the better part of 15 years. I think actually longer, but I'm only going to own 15 of those years because it's just too horrific to think of it being any longer than that. Um, and originally this class was taught completely in the classroom as an evening class, one day a week, three hours at a time which was pretty brutal for everybody, including myself. And so about five or so years ago, um, I changed this to a hybrid format, which has been really successful. And with the hybrid format, what happened was the majority of the course was, oh, well, actually I should say all of the course content was offered online um, in these lecture videos, simil similar to what you're looking at right now. Um, but every week we came together for one hour and we did sort of a summary lecture, sometimes questions, answers, those kinds of things. Um, so as a totally online class, we are going to miss that opportunity. So what I want to do first is I want to kind of walk you through how the class is set up. Um, the Canvas portal, as some of you may or may not be familiar with Canvas, but this, what you're looking at on the screen right now, this is the introduction page to our class. This will only be a page you'll see for about a week, and then um, I'll change this welcome to the home page, which I'll show you in a minute. So once you guys got your announcement that your course is available, which happens will happen tomorrow, right? It's Sunday right now, Sunday, August 27th. The semester starts tomorrow morning, and so everybody will be able to see this class tomorrow. So I've sent you an announcement and directed you to the course page, and when you log in to Canvas and you select on Biology 200 CRN 50074, this is what you see. And once you got here, you then clicked this link right here that says, please click this link for a video to welcome you to the course, which you've already obviously already done that because you are watching the video now. So after you finish watching this video, you're going to continue on. So you're going to then click on this link and that will bring you to the home page. And again, your page, your screen's going to look a tiny bit different from me, but it should be fairly similar. So I just want to kind of walk you through how this class is set up. So um, this is going to be your home page, and the class is divided into 10 units, and each of those units is going to be accessible down here. These are all linked. You can click on them, which I'm going to do in a moment. The other th way you can find all of your material is on the left side of the screen. This is kind of another way to navigate through the course. Your syllabus will be here. You can also access your syllabus here. I'm going to do that in a minute. All the modules, which are the units 1 through 10. There's an introduction, a course introduction module as well. Um, conferences. Um, I am going to do some live lecturing well, live being virtually live, real-time lecturing, and um, that conference tab is um, one of the ways that we might use, uh, we might use the conferencing that way. I'm gonna experiment on the first night of class by using an additional site, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a minute, um, and that will house our first conference, and I'm gonna play around to see which ones I like better. I've used this one on Canvas before but I have not used the other one. Um, 
you can get to discussions, all of your assignments can be linked here, and um, your grades can be found here as well. So once you get rolling, right, so here's a little introduction. I am going to give you guys a live, virtually live lecture on Wednesday night at six o'clock. For those of you who would like to ch listen, um, it would have been the lecture I would have given in class as the hybrid. I'm still playing around with the, I, I cannot, I can't let go of the actual live interaction, the idea of interacting live. So I'm going to offer that. It's not going to be required. All things that we do, these virtual live calls, um, hopefully if everything works correctly with the technology, will be recorded and you can access them at another time if you're not available at the um, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Uh, once we get rolling, I'll send out a survey to sort of see, give you guys some options in terms of times. Um, I'll always make these lectures at night because most people work during the day and so night is easier. I may even go for a weekend. Um, so I'll send out a couple options and, and whatever gets the most votes will be the one we'll go with. Um, okay, so let me kind of run you through this. So to get started, you're going to go first to the course orientation module which is right there, you're gonna click on that. All right, and all, there's, there's a little le a letter in here that welcomes you to the class. It's gonna explain a little bit more about the class. Then you're going to navigate, you can always just keep going forward. This kind of gets you rolling with Canvas if you've never used it. If you have used it, you know, you don't really need to do this, but it's a student tutorial. You can always go back and see this anytime. Here's all kinds of tutorials if you wanna just kind of go through any of this. Some of it is helpful, some of it's not. It's your choice. The technology requirements is kind of nice, so if you're not sure, if your computer, sometimes things don't work well, um, you can check this out. One thing I will say, um, specifically when you're trying to take assessments and or tests, they, the Canvas doesn't seem to be optimized for phones or tablets for those um, functions. So my suggestion would be for the ass unit assessments and for the exams, um, things that are, that are timed, you probably want to try to do that at an actual desktop or a laptop computer. That's been my experience. I know that they're working on this, but that ha seems to have been what works best in, in previous semesters. All right, then this is just some general information about how to get me. The best ways to get me is going to be this email. This is my office number. Um, I Because I'm taking a sabbatical, sort of, not really, but I, that was my, my hope and dream, um, I'm not likely going to be on, well, I'm not going to be on campus, that I can say for certain. So you calling me on at that office voicemail is not going to be the best way to go. Um, I will probably give you, reluctantly, my either cell phone or home phone number, um, but I would ask that, short of an emergency, uh, you, would, uh, you would try to address me um, via email first. Um, if you do send it, yeah, I, I, I'm going to be checking my emails regularly, so j um, I will get back to you. I'm pretty good at that, I, unless something goes awry. I am going to be spending time someplace that it is, the internet is not always 100% reliable. Um, I'm not there yet, but I'm headed to my home up that's in the country, up in, way up in Northern California, and that is, was my goal, to spend my semester there doing some um, continuing education for my own career. Um, and so there's a chance that the internet, it's satellite internet, and occasionally it's a little bit spotty. Um, so it, if you don't get a response from me or you don't hear anything from me for a day or so, that's probably what's going on. Um, I will I have the opportunity to drive an hour or so to the nearest town where I can check email if, if that does happen. I'm not, it's not likely, but sometimes the weather gets bad and that's what happens with the internet. So short of that, I will get back to you within 24 hours, Monday through Friday. Weekends are going to probably be potentially a little bit longer delay. There's a chance I will not be checking my email all the time on the weekends, but I will be checking it regularly during the week. 
And if for some reason I'm going to be off grid and out of, out of contact for a, you know a day or so, I'll send an announcement and just let you know that's why what's going on. So please go ahead, feel free to email me. You can email me right out of Canvas. You can also email me to my personal email address, which is um, my school email address, which is located right here, cegan at gwc.cccd.edu, which is also found on your syllabus. Um, but again, emailing right out of Canvas and the way you do that is over here. That goes to my email address as well. So any of those options are great. Um, if you don't hear from me, um, don't feel shy about sending me another email. There are 100 plus of you in this class, which is way bigger than I thought maybe we'd have like 10 people sign up. So having 100 people on an on in an online class is going to be a little bit challenging logistically in terms of emailing. So if you fall through the cracks, I apologize in advance. Um, just send me another email. Just don't feel shy about that at all. All right, so you guys can look at this. These are your student expectations. The biggest thing for online classes is that you check in regularly. Um, you are going to watch for announcements for me to, and, and, and or emails from me. So make sure you know what email address Canvas mails to because that's the only way I'm going to be able to get to you. Um, check the calendar. Anytime I change anything, I add an assignment, add, add a grade, you guys get email notifications. Um, I, I would suggest you download the Canvas app. That's really good for immediate notifications on your smartphones if you have those. Um, so it's your responsibility to be in touch, right? And to have an idea of what's going on and due dates and et cetera, which I'm going to show you in a minute. It's my, my responsibility to communicate to you, respond to you in a timely fashion, and to monitor discussion boards and give feedback as necessary. That's my job. Um, again, I am I'm going to ask in advance because we're doing this for the first time as a solely online class that we all treat each other with a lot of respect and um, we give each other a little bit of latitude because as any anytime you roll out something totally new, there always are glitches. We've been doing this in a reasonable, in a sort of online way for a long time, so I, I don't have that much worry about that, but um, you know, I've never tested online and so I anticipate there'll be some, some potential glitches in that respect. So we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so um, you guys can look through this. A lot of the same information is gonna be found on your syllabus. Um, oh, I need to change these dates. I forgot to do this. I will look at this and I will update this before you guys see this tomorrow with the last day to add the class. It's usually the second day, the, the second Friday of the semester. And that's same. That's going to be the same with the last day to drop the class, um, and then I'll put the last day to get a W. Um, that's one thing that's going to be a little bit hard. This I am required to drop people who are not in attendance. So how I'm going to know that you are in attendance is you're going to do these student introductions, which I'll show you in a minute. So anyone who has not submitted a student introduction and has not done any work at all on Canvas, the only thing you're really going to be required to do is submit the student introduction. Um, if you have not done that by Friday of the, of the second semester, the, pardon me, the second Friday of the semester, I am going to assume that you are not going to be participating and I'm going to have to drop you. So that is um, something we're going to want to make and I'll send announcements out to anyone who's not put in a, in a student introduction to remind you. When it comes to doing the quizzes and the assessments and the, and the exams online, I mentioned this already, but you're gonna want to do this on a laptop or a desktop. Do not do it on a phone or a tablet. They're those oftentimes kind of time out. Once you start an exam, we're going to have four exams, three unit exams and one cumulative final exam. Those are, they're going to be a combination of multiple choice with a few short answer questions. Um, once you, the, the test will be timed, and once you start the exam, you're going to have to complete it in one sitting. And I'm not crazy, I will say this on the front end, I've been trying to work around giving you online tests because I don't think that that's a great way to test, but... Um, I, being an online class, I don't have any other options. I can't require you to come to school to take an exam, which was what my plan was going to be. So for that reason, I'm going to have to time them, um, and they're going to be, you're not going to have a lot of time because, of course, nobody's there to monitor you and um, 
as much as I don't want you looking at your notes and or your books, there's no way that I can really control that. So the way I can control that is make the tests challenging and timed so that you wouldn't have enough time to be looking things up, um, at least all of the questions up. So that's, I think, just the way we're going to do it. We'll talk more about that, and you guys can ask me questions or send me emails about that if you have any questions. <clears throat> All right, so if there is a problem while you're taking an assessment or a te test, get to me right away. Email me right away. Alert me. Um, there's, uh, there are, let me go back for a second. Um, I'm going to add to this the, the help number for you to call immediately if you're taking a test on campus. So I'll put that as a bullet. Um, it's, it's able to be found here, but I'll, I'll put it there as well. Um, here's some other resources. If you're looking for resources, there it is. So this is just that course orientation. Here's all kinds of things about school, um, student services, etc. This is just a generic. You probably have this on all of your can sites for Canvas. All right, so here's the first thing you're going to be required to do. It will show up tomorrow, and it's just going to say, introduce yourself, you know, what you're looking for, what, what your background is, what you're looking to get out of this class. Um, again, it's an online class. It, it makes it a lot more fun if we engage. Um, I'm going to uh, suggest that if you're interested in forming study groups that you might connect with people that are also interested in that. That's a really great way to learn pharmacology, especially when we're not coming together as a class. Um, so this is your first thing. So you'll submit it right. This will pop up. You're going to submit it right here. It will show up tonight at tonight being or t early tomorrow morning at just after midnight on August 28th, you can get on that. All right, so that's the end of it. Once and you're going to do this, it's going to be due um, at the end of the week. So again, I, 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 I tell you on the student introductions to have it done by Friday. It's going to disappear. I mean, absolutely the drop dead date on that is, is the census date, which is going to be the second Friday of the semester. And anyone who has not submitted a student introduction, again, I'm just going to assume that you're not interested in the class and I will drop you. All right, so now we get to the meat of the class. Now this is going to be unit one. And again, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you here. This is also how you can find all of this stuff. If you click modules on the left side, modules on the left side will get you to unit one. You'll notice all of your units are going to show up here. Right now it's only unit ones, two, and three, which are visible because those are the units that we're going to be, that are going to be covered on our first exam. So when you come in here, there's a task list that's going to tell you what you want to do with every, every week, what you're going to want to do. And I probably won't write this every week, but just to get us rolling. You're going to watch the lecture videos. You're going to write down any questions that you might have. You can save them for, for our live session, our live, virtually live session, or you can post them to a discussion board. Um, and then after you watch the videos, you're going to take your unit assessments. <clears throat> and I'll show you where that is in a minute. All right. So... Back to the modules. So unit, all of our units are broken down. They're me doing this in front of the camera mostly. A couple of them you're not going to see me because I probably recorded them in the middle of the night or I just looked way too scary to even consider putting my face in there. I just vacillated around that. I would really rather not put my face up there for you to see, but um, research shows that it's easier for you to pay attention, I guess, if you see a talking head, if you're having to do something online. And I do a lot of online learning myself for my own personal development, and I would agree with that, that it does help to see somebody's face sometimes, although sometimes it can be distracting, but it seems to help. So these are pretty easy, right? These are just YouTube videos. You can just click on them. Um, you can also, if for some reason you're having an issue with Canvas, you can find my YouTube channel, which is just my name, Kate Egan and you'll be able to find a folder for pharmacology and all of the videos are gonna be in there. When you start pressing, if you want closed caption, there's gonna be a little closed caption here and you could actually see the captions as well if that's something that you're interested in. <coughs> Excuse me. The file that, that's, that this lecture is, lecture, that, that I'm using when I'm lecturing is gonna be found in the next um, folder. Um, and the other thing that this that this these presentations do is they follow the required textbook. The required textbook in this class is a soft cover. It's like twenty five bucks. It's the introduction to pharmacology, and it's essentially the outline for these slides. I would suggest you buy the book. You're going to spend way more money printing out these slides than you are if you just buy the book. I'll give you that. There's hundreds of hundreds of slides. So the goal, the, the idea with the book is that you can fill in as, as you're watching the videos, you can follow along 
and you can fill in anything as you go. But like I said, you also have access to the file as well, so it's kind of your choice. All right, so for unit one, there's a lot of videos. I believe there's six. Um, they're not all, I try to keep them, you know, 30 minutes or less. For sometimes I go a tiny bit over. Some of them are gonna be like 10 minutes, you know. <laughs> These are kind of funny because you can tell as I went through this, I started in the evening and when I get to the last one, it's like dark and I'm, you know, <laughs> tired. So, um, these are going to be what you're going to, this is how you're going to access all the content for this class. All right, so those are the lecture videos. The next file is going to have the, um, this is the PowerPoint that I lectured to. It's a big, huge file, so it takes forever to load. Um, it can be downloaded if you want to. There it is. Okay, um, this is your unit assessment. You can't see it yet because you haven't taken it yet, but they're all going to be 10 questions. You notice when you look at the unit assessment that you have two attempts. So you have two attempts to take this. They, the units one, two, and three are all gonna be due the fourth week of the Friday of the fourth week of the class. And you'll see that on the schedule and it's also on the syllabus. So you're gonna wanna make sure you take these assessments at least once, uh, but you have two times to take them. You will not see the correct answers until you have finished your second attempt. So those, and so this is, going to be the way each unit is set up. Then we go into unit two. Okay. Um, what else should I show you? Um, let's go to the syllabus. So the syllabus is here posted for you. You can read it on your own. I don't need to read it to you. It has the text, which is written here, the drop policy. Um, September 8th is the census date. So again, if you have not submitted that student introduction by September 8th. That's when I'm gonna assume you're not coming. Here are, so the class, like I said, we're gonna have four exams, three unit exams and one cumulative final. I'll talk more about those as we get closer. There's gonna be three homework assignments. The unit assessments, there's 10 of them, one for each unit. We're gonna be doing some case discussions, three with a, in there each, at least, at least, at most three, the, there'll be a possibility of 15 points for these case discussions. Um, so here's how this is all going to roll out in terms of points. The grading scale is there. It's a standard grading scale. Um, the student learning objectives are there. Okay, so here at the bottom of this is anything that already has a due date. So you'll notice Friday, September 22nd, you're gonna, this will be the day that your first exam needs to be completed. It's not listed on there because I don't have a column for it yet, but it will say exam one is gonna have to be completed. Homework one will be due. You'll submit it on Canvas. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, later in your three unit assessments. And then for our second exam, our second exam is gonna cover units four and five. This is traditionally the most challenging part of the class. That will be due by October 20th. It will be available that whole week, that week of the semester, but it, you have to have it completed by October 20th, which is a Friday, and you'll have to have units four and five assessments completed then as well. Homework number two will be due on November 17th. Unit six, seven, and eight will be due on Monday, November 27th, and, unit, and, and exam three will be also closed on that Monday. The reason why it's Monday instead of the previous Friday is because that's Thanksgiving. That Thursday so I didn't want to make you take a test on Thanksgiving because that's just not cool and then finally this is our last day of the semester your third homework um, will be to read this article uh, it's a medical letter article on diabetes you will have an assessment to, uh, the, or pardon me you will have a home this is the actual homework assignment there's like five questions um, your ten, unit 10 and 9 and 10 assessment and then um, your final exam will have to be completed I don't know why this is there. That's I'm, that's just a document that's there for some strange reason. Um, all right, so that's that. Oh, let me go back to modules for a second. So I give you a re, um, exam review sheets, and currently I might change them and put them at the end of each unit. But currently, for this first exam, if you go to to unit three in here in the handouts and assignments you will see your exam study guide for exam one, which is units one, two, and three. And then this is your first homework assignment. 
your options for completing this first homework assignment are to print it, scan, fill it out and scan it and email it back to me. You could type it the answers into, um, well, that's probably the best way to do it. You could type the answers into an email, I suppose, as well. Um, the other option would be to print it, complete it on paper. You're going to probably want to do this in the library at school because you're going to be looking at a couple of drug reference books, which are located in the Golden West Library. The other option is to put it in my mailbox, and I can have my course assistant pick it up and she could scan it. So those are your three options, and I will remind you of all that, both verbally and in an email as we get closer. Um, I think that does it for orienting you to the class. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do these weekly lectures. I'm kinda gonna fly by the seat of my pants on that. Uh, historically, how I've done it is it's been kind of a summary, or in some cases, where um, the t where the content is a little more challenge a little bit more challenging, I will talk about a specific portion of the class. Um, ideally, what I could do in those live some live virtual uh, sessions would be to answer questions. I think that would be the best use of the time. Um, I'm also going to before our exams, I'll schedule a couple virtual exam reviews for each exam. Those those were really helpful. We did that this summer in our condensed hybrid course. So I'm trying to make it as, as much like a live class for those of you who want live stuff. If you don't, if you don't want to listen to the live calls, they're, they're just going to be a reiteration of the recorded content. So all the material that you absolutely need to access is available for you already on there. It's already on Canvas. It's recorded. It's ready to go. So if you're that person that just wants to access it that way, then that's totally up to you. You will not be required to attend the live calls. Um, but for those of you who need some actual live interaction to keep you on track, um, I'm going to do that. And um, like I said, I will have those recorded. And so if you can't make it, but you would like to have seen it, um, you can access it that way. And I'll direct you to the recording once we get rolling. The first one is going to be the first time I'm using this new platform. So that may or may not be um, quite as effective, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I think that's it. I am excited. I love, love, love pharmacology. I love to teach pharmacology. Um, I'm a physician by trade, so, that, so this is a, a very exciting topic. Um, and I welcome you. I hope that you enjoy the class. Um, if you're finding yourself struggling, oh, one more thing. We usually have a tutor, and I've emailed him, William Doe. Some of you probably know him. He tutors for almost all the science classes. He's been a tutor of mine for um, many semesters. He's very good. He knows all about my class. He's taken my class. He's a great, he's a great resource. So um, I have gotten in touch with him to see if he's going to offer a tutoring session on campus for pharmacology. And once he gets back to me, I will let you know. There are tutors for pharmacology. Um, for those of you who don't know this, you are, you are um, entitled to free tutoring at Golden West, so I would highly recommend you take advantage of it. So go in, and um, especially if you find yourself struggling. For, this is a class that um, historically is challenging for a couple reasons. Um, one, it leans very heavy on physiology. So in order for you to be enrolled in this class, you've already taken physiology because physiology is a prereq for this pharmacology class. But it does lean heavily on pharmacology, and it does require you to be able to think critically. You're not going to be... The way I teach pharmacology, I don't believe in having you memorize lists of drug names. I don't feel that that's a useful way to go about this subject. Other people do, and that's the way that they teach it, but that's not the way that I teach it. We will emphasize drug groups. We will not be memorizing drug names, brand names, generic names very often. I mean, I will tell you a lot of drug names, but it, in most cases, you're not going to be required to remember the drug names. There are a few, and those drugs that you're required to know by name are listed in your book in bold. Um, but short of that, the names I give are just for, uh, usually for illustration. But you are going to have to think critically. I, I'm a big 
I think crit think critical thinking is what we all should be doing more of. And so that's the way my tests will be written. And that's the way, um, that's just the way I think, that's just what I believe is the most effective way to learn a subject. So um, when you start taking the assessments, those are, the assessments are questions out of my test bank. I don't use a textbook, so I don't have a textbook question test bank, which works out well because test books, test banks are usually horrible. Um, but they are, you know, like questions that, that I've written and over the years and um, in some cases are challenging in the sense that they're, they're just, it's not just all just rote memorization. I mean, there'll be certainly be some of that in there, but there are going to be some more higher level thinking questions as well. Okay. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to meeting you guys all in this virtual space this semester.